Alrighty gentlemen, what we have here is a GM Vortec 4200, a Maribera, the Foo Jay-Z, whatever you want to call it, and we're putting it in this Volvo here, 1983 Volvo wagon, and today I'm going to be working on the oil pan. So I do have a Colorado 5 cylinder oil pan here, got this one from Rock Auto for about 100 bucks. I do also have a brand new 5 cylinder pickup tube, so I'll be modifying and extending that. The fitment for the pan or on the rack honestly looks pretty good. I might be able to extend the sump a little bit, so I'll evaluate that if I want to. But what I'm thinking I might do is just cut it here and then extend the front portion because this rear section actually fits pretty good. I may or may not want to add a little bit on there just to add some more capacity, but I'll have to measure it out and see what we actually get. Alright, so I did a little bit of testing, took some water and actually filled up the pan with different levels. This level here, you can see the water comes up to about this line on the pan, and that is 5 quarts in the pan. So that is the rating of the pan. I believe it's 5 quart rating. So there's really a lot of, a lot of room left. 7 quarts actually came up to the top of this rear line right here. I have some pictures. The whole pan physically holds about 11 and a quarter, 11 and a half quarts of fluid. So I don't really feel like I need to actually make the sump part any bigger. I could just run some extra oil in it and not have really have any issues. So I think I'm going to probably just cut it and extend it here instead of trying to work on the sump. And I feel like that should be pretty safe because the return oil from the head is prioritized to go rearward. It doesn't go into the middle and obviously acceleration will help push the oil backwards anyway. So, so I think that's my plan. I'll get this thing out and Start mocking it up on the engine and figure out where I need to cut. Alrighty, so after eyeballing this thing a little bit more, I'm not going to be able to do exactly what I wanted by cutting this front section off and moving it because the bolt pattern is kind of kind of weird. So the bolt holes line up all the way back to this point and then these holes in the rear don't line up. It seems like this section here also has a unique pattern because like the two rears line up but then this one doesn't line up with the third hole. What I'm going to end up doing because I want to keep this height all the way back and I don't want to cut it here and then move the sump forward because I liked how this fit around the steering rack. What I'm going to do is I'm going to section it out here. I'll cut it up, follow along this tape line and then cut it across and then I'll be able to use the full front section with these bolt holes and then I'm going to take the, the rear section and then slide this back. I should be able to weld it back together at this seam and then I'll have to add some here and then add some across here. So that's the plan. Let's try it out. Okay, so here's kind of what I got going on so far. This side, I didn't really consider the fact that it is actually a little bit wider on the back side here than this part, so this moves straight back, but this part kind of jogs out a little bit. So I'll have to do a little bit of filling, so I cut this section down a little bit more so I can kind of angle a piece in from here to here. I do have some scrap aluminum flat stock here that I'm going to be using to weld that in. And this side actually turned out not too bad. So I have a long section here. I'll just be able to weld and then I'll fill this section in. And then I should just be able to go over the top here with some plate. And it'll look fantabulous. So what I'm going to do now is start bolting the thing down, make sure it's nice and secure in place. And then I can start fitting up some of the pieces and tack welding them in. All right. So I super efficiently used approximately seven minutes to cut some cardboard pieces. And I got pretty much the templates that I need. Now I'll go ahead and bolt it down and kind of cut and trim these pieces and then we can start welding. So one thing I want to keep in mind or do a little bit differently on this one is try to use a little bit less heat because I built a 350Z oil pan and it ended up warping quite a bit and I did bolt it down to the engine but I used a lot of heat and I did like a lot of really long beads so I'm going to try to do that a little bit differently 
maybe do some smaller beads, try to use less heat, tack it in a bunch of spots first before I fully weld it, and then hopefully don't have to worry about any warping issues. Okay, here's all the pieces, all mocked up, ready to get welded in. This piece on the back side was a little bit tricky and there are some gaps in it, so I'm just going to weld over the gaps, but it should all work out. I did get this piece bolted down, so that should be tight. Uh, I do have a lot of uh, grease and dirt fingerprints on it, so I'm going to go over everything, brush it, wipe it down with acetone, and hope this all works out. <laughs> And just like that, we have an oil pan. So the gaps filled pretty well. No issues there. That was a gap. That was a big gap there. You can see that they all filled in really nice. I didn't lay a bead behind where this bolt is. I'll catch that one from the inside. Turned out okay. I think that should work. Uh, I'll just have to leak check it. Probably do the welding on the inside. Then I do have two more bolt holes that I can work with. I don't know if I'll do that one. I might end up making this one here. But other than that, I think this thing turned out pretty good. Alright, so this one here didn't have a hole in it, so I drilled and tapped this one. I marked this one with a punch. Also marked this one. So then I'll take the pan off and I'll drill and tap those, so then I can just run a bolt in here. And then this one, I ran a bolt through the back side so I could put a mark on this little flange where that hole comes through. 
So then when I take the pan off, I'll be able to drill that one. Drill and tap these, try not to drop any metal in there. And this thing is completely cool to the touch now, so I'm going to take it off and weld the insides. Alright, I am done with the pan. Now, I welded in these little sections here, extended the baffles, so that's pretty much pretty much all she wrote for this thing. So, the pan did warp a little bit when I went to do the insides. I'm actually kind of surprised by the inside. I was able to really touch up a lot of the weld on the inside. I was surprised that I was actually able to reach inside of here. I was able to get the majority of it. Even inside here and all the pieces on here, I was actually able to weld all that in between this little divider. So I was kind of impressed by that, but the downside is when I did that, it did shift a little bit, warped a little bit. So some of the holes are slightly misaligned where I did have to like tap them out a little bit. Or that one, you can actually see some threads in the oil pan. I just ran the tap through it and was able to get it to work. So here's kind of what I'm talking about now. This little bit. So it's really not a whole lot, but it's just enough to be annoying because it didn't warp at all when I did just the outside, but then when I flipped it and I did the inside, that's when it shifted. So, so hopefully it doesn't cause me any issues with leaking or anything. If not, I could probably just have it milled flat and be good to go. But pretty happy with how it turned out. Definitely took me a long time. I've been out here for like uh, 11 hours start to finish but that includes like a couple store trips eating breaks all that stuff so and I uh, look like I've been working all day so that's it for this one I'm gonna do the pickup tube probably next I don't know if I'll make a whole video on that probably not but I'm also going to be redoing the garage floor over this weekend so after this video I'm going to be kind of cleaning out the garage and I'm going to be doing uh, epoxying the garage floor finally so Excited to do that and this guy's floor looks horrible, and I don't really like the cream color You know can't have too much cream with the Volvo in here now So I've got to get rid of that stuff, but that should be an adventure I got to clean up all this crap and get everything like outside and then prep the floor. I'm gonna rent a Grinder for the floor Probably give me a good excuse to clean the garage So that'll probably take like a week and then after that we'll get back to the Volvo